Hello crafters and welcome to Nickrit. In today's video we're going to go over how to make this really cute hair bun piece that is detachable. I think I'm going to eventually add velcro on the inside and put velcro on the tops of my Luna heads and just attach it that way. I have been just kind of sliding them on like so. It's been a lot easier just kind of twisting it on um, if that makes any sense. Otherwise it kind of looks a little loose. They're meant to be a little bit tight so that they'll actually stay on. Uh, I think the Velcro will definitely help with that. Um, it's a super easy pattern and I think I'm going to do a couple more uh, hair pieces for my Lunas. This one's really cute. I loved how this one turned out. Oh, please just stand. They don't like to stand, I've noticed. So I also made a really cute little t-shirt for them. Um, this is coming off the heels of making my Luna dress, so if you want to see a pattern for a t-shirt, stay tuned. I'm also going to make one that's a little less belly and has a nice frill on the bottom. So again, stay tuned for that. This is a super easy pattern. If you know how to work in the round, this will be super easy for you. This is again not introductory, but it is an easy pattern if you know how to follow charts and you know how to follow a pattern. Um, so then this is the tutorial for you. Um, you're going to need a worsted weight yarn for this pattern. I'm using Heartland in this. I've used it for all of my hair. I like how it's kind of got all these nice undertones, so it makes it a little bit easier to do. It has this nice undertone to it, which kind of gives a bit more of a texture to the hair, which I like. This one is in Redwood. I'm going to be working with Yosemite as the color for this tutorial. You're also going to need a 3.25 millimeter or a D3 crochet hook and a darning needle. Super easy peasy. I'm using a Susan Bates crochet hook. I'll link everything down below for patterns and everything that you might need if you are a beginner and wanting to do this. All right, let's get started. To begin, you're going to want to make a ring. The way that I do that is just by doing chaining two. I leave a decent length tail, so about six inches or so. I'm going to make a slip knot, and I'm going to chain two. So one, two. And I'm going to place six single crochet inside of that first chain. I skipped my second chain and I went right into my first and I'm putting two, three, four, five, and six. You'll notice that your piece is really big. We're essentially just doing the same increasing that we would do and the same going around that we would do for our Luna head. So if you are familiar with our basic Luna body and you're familiar with the basic amigurumi ball, all we're doing is the increasing and all of the single crochets around before we do our decreasing. That's essentially what we're doing for this, if that makes sense. I'm going to pop up a pattern up here, and so um, I'm going to go through all of the increasing as it is. I'm also going to put a chart up here so you can see, but you're going to increase six stitches every single round. We're going to take our six in that case, and we're going to increase every single stitch because we're increasing six stitches each round, and we're going to put two single crochets in each one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm putting two, stitch, uh, two stitches in each stitch going around. Nine. And back inside the same stitch, 10, 11, and 12. So now we are at 12 stitches. We are going to single crochet one increase, single crochet one increase the entire time around. So one, go into the next stitch, one, two, one, one, and then two, one, one, two, one, ah, one, there we go, I'm trying not to split my yarn, I have a tendency to do that, one, two, one, one, two, I think I've got one more to do, and that'll get me to 18. One, one, two. Yep, 
So that gets me to 18 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18 stitches around. I am now going to take my tail and act as if it is my stitch marker. I'm going to pull that through just like I did for all of my other videos. If you're watching this one, I imagine you have watched the Nova doll video, so you're very familiar with what I'm doing. That's kind of why I'm going a little bit faster than usual. If you're confused, go over to my Amigurumi ball. I explain these increases much more over there. So I'm going to go one, two, and then increase because each time I'm going around I'm adding one to the singles that I'm going around with each one, if that makes sense. So one, two, three, and then I increase, so I put another one inside that same stitch. One, two, three, and then four. One, two, three, then four. And the hair. I think there's a Loki hair, my cat. One. Nope, not through both. I always go through just the first stitch when I'm doing Amigurumi. I think that it looks bubblier. Two, three, and then four. One, two, three, and four. And now I'm back to the very beginning. I'm going to take my tail out and put it through my last stitch there. Just moving it up a little bit. Now I'm going to go one, two, three, and then fourth stitch I increase. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, and five, one. Two, three, four, and then increase into the fifth stitch around. One, two, three, four, increased into five to make it five. One, two, three. Four, five, one, two, three, four, and five. Taking our tail, that was our last one. So now we're gonna go five and six, and this will be our last increasing round. And after this increasing round, we're gonna go around for nine rounds. So we're gonna go a little bit longer than with our Nova Luna heads. Um, I hope that that makes sense. One, two, three, four, five, six. So five and then six going into the same stitch here. One, two, three, four, five same stitch, six. So our increase, one, eek, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, and then six, one, two, three, four, five, and six, one, two, three, four, five, and then our last one, six. So now we've gone around and increased all that we're going to increase for this main piece. We're essentially making this 
base part of the hair piece. I'm going to take it off right now. We're making this part right here and it's super easy. So now we're going to just single crochet around the entire piece for nine rounds and I'll show you what we do for the bangs, kind of scallop edge here. Once I'm done with that, all I'm doing is going around and around and around and around. I'm going to do that while my battery charges because it is dying a sad death. I'll be right back. No more increases, we're just single crocheting around. Bear back. Alright, so I've gone around nine times. So I did one extra row than I did for when I was doing the head, like in my amigurumi video. I went around eight for him, her, and then I went around uh, nine times for this. I'm going to take my tail, I'm going to pull it out, and I'm going to replace it right here where the where it lines up. So I put my tail right there, that's where it began. I'm going to take this and pull it out and this is where my new round starts. My cat is very mad that I'm not letting her in and out of the room. So that is why you keep hearing little meows that are very mad sounding. She has a very strong opinion on pretty much everything. Ever. All the time. Oh my goodness. Alright. So for this part, we are now going on to our last round around. We are going to be making this cute little frill, like so. These are uh, accomplished by doing seven half double crochets in every third stitch. So the way that I go about this is I'm going to, this is done over the course of four stitches, so one, two, three, four. We're going to slip stitch into our first, we're going to skip the next stitch, we're going to place seven half double crochets inside that third stitch right there. So one, instead of going through both, we go through all three. One, all three, two, three, four. All of this is being done into the third stitch. Five, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. And seven. She's so bad. I'm gonna let her out. Alright, so now that we've done our seven half double crochets, we're going to skip the fourth stitch and then we slip stitch again. So this is now we're back at our very first stitch that we are going to do. S slip stitch, skip, seven half double crochets into the third. One, two, ah, don't split. Three, four, Five. And this is all into the same third stitch as I tried to pull my hair a little bit. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I'm six. Oops. Seven. We skip and then slip stitch. So skip this stitch and go into the next one. Slip stitch and we continue that around and we're going to do that for nine times because this is over the course of four stitches We had 36 stitches as what we increased our stuff to and because 36 divided by four is nine So we'll have nine repetitions one two three four five six seven eight nine And I'll show you how I slip stitch off at the very very end I'm gonna keep going around and show you just one more time And then I'm gonna just kind of finish it off and show you how I slip stitch off so skip I've already slip stitched Skip seven half double crochets into the third. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. No, I missed up. Okay, and seven. There we go. Skip and slip into the, the last, or into the first, I guess, because first is when I started. All right, I'm gonna keep going around until I get to the very end and how I slip stitch off. I'll be right back. Okay, so I have finished my last seven half double crochet cluster. I am now going to go back into the very first slip stitch that I created right there. I'm going to slip stitch into that. I'm going to chain one and I'm going to cut. I'm gonna cut. Don't fall. Oh no. I've got like the leaning tower piece over here. A lot of stuff going on. Alright, I'm going to then just pull my tail here and I'm going to hide my tails real quick. The way that I hide my tails and it actually looks somewhat 
decent is I'm going to take my darning needle, I'm going to go in from underneath on the back side and then weave it back through the same stitch going the opposite side and then I'm going to go and feed it through the back of my cluster. I find that that just makes it look the neatest for this one part right here and then I'm gonna feed this tail through the backs of the stitches and there's some polyfill. <laughs> and I'm going to just kind of leave it at that. This is a good amount of space that's just... You can weave it through more if you would like. I think that that's good enough. It's a decent enough, long enough tail. I'm going to flip it inside out and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to feed it through in a U formation uh, through the backs of the stitches here. So one, two, I'm going to feed it through those two three, and four, and then I'm going to feed it back up. So I'm going to go one, two, and then I'm just going through the backs and the stitch is going back up. Four. And then I don't pull it tight or anything, I just kind of leave it as is. I'm then going to cut the tail as close as I can to the piece. That way it doesn't stick out or anything, and I'm going to flip my work back on side out. A big thing with this piece is it's going to take a little bit of stretching and a little bit of moving around to get it onto your little Nova head, or whatever you're making with. If you're making this hair piece for a different one of the Luna dolls, I mean, it'd be kind of weird to have this wig on the Baby Yoda, but I suppose you could make that work if you don't put the ears on, or you put the ears on this out afterwards. I don't know. People get weird with amigurumi. It's kind of great and I love it. So the way that I do that is I kind of just kind of pull it on its sides, pull, 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 and a big thing is it's going to take some stretching to get it to go onto your head. If it's not fitting, don't worry, I stretch mine out and that's kind of just what I do. I'm then going to take my head and I kind of just, like how you would put a lemon on a squeezer, I kind of just keep kind of rolling it onto the head how I want it, and so I generally like it like that. So here we are with our little brunette with our cute little little t-shirt. I love it. I geek out however how adorable it is and I'll just be amazed at like the cuteness of the craft. I just I can't even can't even deal. So next up we are going to take the same yarn and we're going to make the little buns. These are super easy. I actually use a little bit of filling for this. I kind of forgot to mention it. I'm going to leave a little excerpt when I'm going along. Past me made a mistake. Um, you're going to need polyfill for this and you're going to do some increasing for this as well. We're going to make our slip stitch. We're going to do the same exact thing as we did before but we're only going to increase until 18 stitches. So we're going to put six single crochet into our magic ring, just like we do with all of our other amigurumi pieces. Three, four, five, and six. I'm going to pull it tight and then I'm going to increase each of these six stitches to twelve by putting two stitches in each one. So one, two, same stitch, three, four, into the second stitch, yeah. three, four, five, six, into the third stitch, seven, eight, into the fourth stitch, nine, ten, into the nine and ten, into the fifth stitch, and the sixth stitch gets eleven and twelve. We are then, I'm going to keep pulling my tail to make sure that it is nice and tight. I'm then going to do every other stitch to increase it to twelve. So we're going to single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, increase all the way to 18. So 1, 13, That's kind of how I keep track in my head, 1, 14, is my increase, 1, 15, 1, Sixteen, one, seventeen, and our last increase one, and then our increase to eighteen. I'm then going to take my tail, 
I'm going to pull it through so that I know where my work begins. Instead of having to count it the entire time around, I'm going to single crochet around for four rounds. So 18 stitches four times. Two, three. Alright, so now we are getting to the end of our fourth row, one, two, three, four. We are going to actually do some decreasing to help kind of round out the corners. It's kind of what brings in, the decreasing is what brings in the buns and makes it so that it kind of looks more circular and round and tight, you know. So we are going to take our 18 stitches back down to 12. So we're going to single crochet one, and the way that I decrease is I take my first hook and put it into my stitch go into my second one there and then I go through it as if it is one stitch and it's a nice invisible ink decrease so one and again I go through both stitches that I want to decrease pull through and go like that one go through both one go through both one Go through both. Yes, there we go. And one. And this is our last decrease. So instead of going through both on the very last one, I like to just skip one stitch and go into the very, very last one. That way it decreases it, but it also can help me slip stitch off. I'm now going to cut my tail. I'm going to get some. I'm going to cut my tail. I'm going to take my hook and kind of pull it through. the other side I go underneath the stitch that was in front of it and pull that through if that makes any sense just to kind of smooth out the edge I'm then going to take my tail and pull that into just the bun because I don't want to cut it I just want it like in that way I don't have to cut it or do anything it won't minimize or anything I'm going to create a second one of these and then I'm going to be right back and show you how I stuff and how I attach them to my piece like here be right back. Alright, so I kind of went a little fast on how I did my little inverted part there, so I'm going to actually take my darning needle and show you how I do it now that this is stuffed. I basically, you can use either your crochet hook or otherwise, this is just after I slip stitched off. I like to go through the back of the stitch right in front of where I slip stitch and pull that through and then I go through my slip stitch again through the front and I find that that kind of makes it look a little neater right along where the slip stitch happened. I just do that, you don't have to do that, but I find that it looks a little neater. I'm going to now take my other guy here and I'm just gonna stuff him real quick, full of polyfill. I'm using polyester fiber fill for this purpose. And it gets everywhere. I have a lot of polyfill that's just everywhere. I recently pulled apart a bunch of projects that just never turned into anything because they just looked wonky or weird and I just didn't want them stuffed anymore. And now I've got this giant tub full of just half pulled, half played with polyfill. So it looks a little weird, that's why. And here we are. That's about... Oh, I'm going to do one more. It doesn't take a lot of polyfill. I actually overestimated how much I would need. I just would rather not get up again and just have this be a smooth video for once. Oh, I need another one. Jeez. Apparently I need more of this than I think I did. There we go. And that's good. So I'm going to take this. It's a little uh, pokey needle. You can use your darning needle for the same purpose if you've got more than one. Usually I keep on hand probably close to like 30 at any given time if I start losing them. Oftentimes I'll find little pockets where I've kept all of my darning needles that they have all fallen into the abyss. Alright, um, I'm going to take my little bun piece here and I'm going to place it where I want it on my head and I'm going to take my little stick I'm going to stick it through the entire piece there and kind of just let it sit there for a hot minute. 
I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. I'm gonna take my little stick, figure out where I want this. So I kind of want these towards the back, and I'm gonna stick them into the head like so. It doesn't really matter where you start, and then I just sew them on how I usually sew on my work. I oftentimes I'll just take this off after it's where I want it but I just make sure that I don't sew into the head, I just sew into the hair piece. It's a little complicated, so I basically, just to show, I go through where I want it, and then I go back to my yarn and I go through from the front and into the center of the stitch. And I do that the entire time around, and I'm just gonna sew this on real quick. And then that is all she wrote for this pattern. It's really easy. It's super simple. You just got to sew on your buns right afterwards and I think this looks absolutely adorable. This is probably going to be my thumbnail. I love her. Alright, so once you get your sewing done, you do it to both sides and that is pretty much all there is to this bun. It's really cute. I love how it turned out. I've been playing around with the baby Luna a lot more and trying to figure out ways that I'm going to be finishing her off because she's not this is a, a doll that I'm calling Nova, and she's not done quite yet, so I'm trying to figure out what to do. I'm thinking about doing some embroidery, some eyelashes. My mom actually just showed me how to do something called, because my mom does more embroidery stuff than I've ever done. She just showed me how to do something called a Danish knot, which we put on for a belly button, which I think is literally just the cutest thing ever, and I'm really excited about that. I also have been making little t-shirts for my little dolls. These will fit onto any of the Baby Luna bodies, so I'm going to show you in the next tutorial. Apparently my cat decided to just lay on this at one point. Yeah, no, she totally did. My cat laid on my little desk. Oh well. So this will fit on any of the Baby Luna bodies. It'll fit on the Baby Yoda if you want it to. So if you're interested in learning how to do this, this will be my next video. I'm actually going to be um, doing some filming for that today as well, so we'll see how that goes. All of these will fit every single one, so if you come across uh, a tutorial in the future where I've done the bunny and I've actually accomplished my entire list of Lunas that I want to get done, this will fit on any of their bodies and I'm pretty excited about it. Alright, so stay tuned for that. Thank you again for watching and until next time guys, bye!